I know you could be doing a lot of things and decide to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, in our outrageously fine studios. So we appreciate you doing that. And I think you made a wise choice because Darren Simmons, 22 years special teams coach in the National Football League, Bengals assistant head coach as well. His group had a game. They had a day. Offense did what they needed to do to win the football game. Defense played at a very high level, as did special teams. So two out of the three phases played very, very good football. Man, 100-yard kickoff return to start the game. Lost the coin toss. Okay, well, they're going to defer. They're going to kick off to you. Darren's probably like, yeah, I get to show my adjustment. He had Drew Sample doing something different than he'd done all season long in terms of his blocking assignment. And, boy, he sprung Charlie 100 yards. Bengals have a lead 12 seconds into the football game. Never trail. Big, big momentum shift. Uh, they got all of the energy on their side because Cleveland been on the road for three weeks and Chubb was back and all these things to energize the Cleveland Browns. The Bengals took the air out of the balloon. That big special teams play. Charlie also had a 23-yard punt return. He was outstanding in the return game. The Bengals dominated field position, average drive start. They were 11 yards better than the Cleveland Browns total to about 150 yards of hidden yards. Big, big day for Darren Simmons and his group of special teamers. We talked about it with him. Great call by you to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, and check this studio out. How lucky are we? First Star Logistics sets us up, and this gentleman set up his special teams for success. 22 years of excellence for the Cincinnati Bengals in terms of special teams. He's also assistant mm-hmm. head coach. He's as good a football coach as I've ever been around. He knows his stuff, a great human being to boot. Darren Simmons, Coach, we appreciate your time. I know it's busy times for you, sir. Well, thank you for having me on. I always enjoy coming on. So, how about it? 12 Mm -hmm. seconds into the football game, one of the big things was, man, Cleveland, they've been on the road for three weeks. They're going to come back to that crazy fan base. Nick Chubb's coming back. Man, he's going to be the last guy introduced, I think. Yeah, he was. And they react accordingly and everything. And 12 seconds later, Bengals up seven zip. They're kind of sitting on their hands and – uh, take us through that one, Coach. That was a spectacular return by Charlie Jones. Yeah, you know, it, we went through this exact same scenario, uh, you know, on Saturday night before the game, talking about the, the, the crowd's going to be electric. I'm sure that, uh, um, you know, they're going to introduce the offense, uh, and, and I'm sure the child will be last, and, okay. and the place is going to explode. You know, they're trying to live on, the, you know, the emotion of him coming back. And, and so certainly it, it was good by our guys to come out and put a stop to that, you know, right away and, and kind of flip that energy and momentum and, and kind of pop the balloon, um, so to speak, with that right away. So it, it was it was really good uh, to, to flip the tide, flip the momentum on them, you know, right away. You know, it, it, the uh, the play that we ran, it was, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when you draw something up, uh, sometimes it works that way. Sometimes it works exactly where you have it drawn up. Sometimes it doesn't. Right. This one happened to work out exactly the way we, we thought it would go. And, and so that was really, really cool to see, to, you know, to have something, uh, you know, kind of come to life right in front of your face and, and work. And, uh, you know, we, we had all 11 guys do exactly what they're supposed to do on that play, which they should do that on every play. But it, right. as you know, it's the, the guys on the other side get paid too. Yep. And uh, so it was good to see. It was, it was really good. It's a really good effort. It was a great finish. It's an unbelievable finish by Charlie, um, you know, to stay in bounds there right at the very end. I, I didn't know that he – I didn't know until the official signaled something how close he really was over there. But uh, really an unbelievable effort by a lot of guys and certainly by Charlie getting in the end zone. And and by you uh, setting him up for success, you, you make an adjustment, what you have Drew Sample doing. And, I mean, it literally looked like an isolation play and Drew Sample's the fullback, Charlie's the tailback, and, you know, uh, attacking attacking downhill. And, and Drew Sample gets his block as he always does. Man, that, that guy – he, he, he never has the spotlight shining on him, but, man, he does his job about as well as anybody, and he moves his guy, and Charlie hits it. And, and after the game, Charlie said, I, I just did what Coach Simmons said. He said, if I hit it, get to the right, man. Get to the right. And I got to the right and went to the house. 
<laughs> well, I'm gonna remember that too. I wish you do what I say. What, I wish you do what I, I told him to do all the time. We would. We'd have a hell of a lot more punt returns. <laughs> but no, it. it uh, <laughs> It, like I said, it happened. End up, it happened to work out exactly like we wanted to. You know, I think with the, with the changes and the way the kickoff rules are now, you know, Drew Sample has been a very, very effective blocker on kickoff uh, yeah. return for us over the past years. I would tell you that these new rules probably don't help him a whole lot. It's probably not as uh, uh, easy for us to really take advantage of, of him the way we have in the past. But you know, we we're able to come up with a little bit of something that, that kind of got him back in a position that he was comfortable with, kind of being that lead blocker, if you will, a little bit. And uh, it, it was something I was highly, highly confident in that he was going to execute uh, well, and, and he did. So, um, like, like I said, very happy for all those guys. They, they all, they all did a hell of a job. So, coach, I think it was only the third kickoff return for touchdown uh, this season. Uh, goes for 100 yards, and, and Charlie Jones now finds himself in elite company. I mean, Lamar Parrish and Charlie Jones, the only guys in franchise history, have a punt return touchdown and a kickoff return touchdown. And I played with Lamar Parrish, and that dude was electric. I mean, yeah. he was a freakazoid return guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I found myself like mouth agape watching him return, you know, mm-hmm. as ready to go on the field offensively. He was unbelievable. Charlie now, uh, I mean, he had a 23-yard punt return as well. He touched the ball five times as a returner in the football game for you and averaged 28 yards per touch. Pretty darn effective. Well, it was good. You know, we've been we've been looking to kind of get that portion of the game going. You know, we haven't had a ton of opportunities on kickoff return. You know, we, we felt very confident Cleveland was going to kick us the ball um, because they challenged every team that they went up against so far. And uh, you know, we felt very confident that, confident that they were going to do that again, and uh, they did. They and thankfully it was on the opening kickoff there, and uh, so we were able to get started fast. You know, it, it's always better, certainly as you know, as a player, that when you can play with the lead. It. it uh, it's just a different feeling on the sideline. There, there's not the, uh, you know, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, the state of anxiety or the fear of being behind and, and guys start to press a little bit. It's certainly better when you can play in front. So, you know, we can do that in the first play of the game. That, that certainly helps. And you got in front and stayed in front. They scored and missed yeah. an extra point. You guys never gave up the lead. I mean, that 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 was that was big, man. Uh, it, it really was a factor all throughout the football game and game management and decision-making and all that sort of thing was a huge factor in it. So the other thing you look at is, is field position from a special team standpoint. I know you're, um, you're very observant of, of that. And, you know, there were factors, turnovers, et cetera. But one of your kickoffs, you know, they, they had trouble handling that bad boy and you set them back, you know, very poor field position. Let's see, one, two, three times. Uh, no, no, one, two, three, four, five times. Five times they start inside their 20 yard line. I mean, they start inside the 10 three times, a four time at the 11. I mean, that's that's setting them back. 14 possessions for each team. You had an 11 yard uh, field position advantage, 36 uh, drive start for you, 25 for them. That's 154 hidden yards. That's a that's darn near two football fields, you know, and then, and then you take penalties into consideration. Yeah. You know, there was like 40 some odd advantage in penalties. They had 10. We had three. The Bengals had three. And it's like 40 some odd yards. It's a couple of hundred yards right there. Two football fields and, and yards that you said, yeah, we'll take them. Let's go. Well, I think it's, especially when, when they've had some struggles on offense like they've had too, that, that anything that uh, that sets them back or puts them on the negative side of field position will really affect them. And I think that showed in the game. They started to press a little bit. Our defense got a couple turnovers there in the third quarter, which, you know, really – um, change the flow of the game, you know, and again, like I said before, when you're playing from ahead, it, it's really helpful. When you're behind, guys start to press a little bit and start to try to make plays, and when you try to make plays, you know, that's a lot of times when things go wrong. So it, it, it's certainly to be on the uh, the other side of that field position battle and, uh, you know, always be on, you know, in a favorable way that way. So I got to ask you, was was there any breeze down on the field that was an issue? Both field goal kickers missed, you know, they missed from 49. We missed from 50. They missed an extra point as well. Um, was there anything that we weren't cognizant of or was it just, you know, not their day? Um, just not their day. You know, that, that's about as good a day in Cleveland, I think, as you're ever going to play it. I mean, it was beautiful out. The, right. the, the uh, field was in superb condition. Uh, the, the grass was 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 great. Um, and usually, you know, it, it's freezing cold or it's raining or it's always something in Cleveland, but it, it was a great day out. So, no, I, I think the weather had no effect uh, on any of the kicks. I, I think it just, you know, not great execution. Certainly wasn't very good execution on our end. 
you know, we get we get a we get a cleaner snap, we get a cleaner hold to give Evan the chance to to um, make that kick. Um, so not good enough by those three guys. Um, they had their struggles too as well. Um, you know, Hopkins he missed a couple in pregame warm up and then yeah. uh, end up having exactly the same misses in the game. So you know, just not a good day for for kickers in Cleveland Stadium. Uh, punting the football, I think you had four inside the 20 and uh, maybe one touchback, I think, something like that. Or maybe it was four without any touchback. Uh, it, it was That part of it was good, but overall, not not as pleased as, as no. you hope to be. <laughs> no, no, it certainly was not. I think it was by far, by far Ryan's worst game um, here with us. Um, you know, it got, he, he was great in pregame warm-up. He had the ball really good, um, you know. Powerful like he's been. I mean, those are the – Ryan was the number one ranked punter in Bohorquez. Their punter was the number two ranked punter right. you know, coming into the game. And, uh, you know, I felt good coming out of pregame warm-up, and he, we just didn't do a good enough job carrying it over into the game. Um, you know, and the alarming part to me was, you know, when things kind of went bad, he, he just struggled to get it back. You know, and sometimes that uh, you identify things that you're doing technically the – that uh, you need to fix from one punt or one kick to the next. And right. we just didn't do a good enough job of, of getting that uh, um, done and applying it to the game, applying it to the next punt. So I expect certain things. I expect better from him, and I know he. I know he'll be better in the future. It's it's in there. He just got to get it. This wasn't his, this wasn't a good day for him. Tough day. Couldn't be happier for uh, Tyson Anderson, man. I mean, yeah. he's uh, he's getting the job done for you as a gunner and all the adversity this kid's faced, and he's such a great kid. Talk about what Tyson Anderson means to your special teams. Well, he's done a, it, it, it's, you know, I think everybody was, was so elated for him last week when he got a game ball because they, right. they've seen the struggles that he's had in terms of, uh, not, not to necessarily the struggles that he's had, but I think they see the time, the effort, and, and how important it is, it is for him to play well and, and to be there for his teammates and to be around the guys. And, and so it's just so uplifting to, to see him have success. Um, and because as you stated before, he's such a good kid and he tries so hard and he wants it, to, he wants to be great. And, uh, he does all the little things that, uh, even as a young player, he understands what all the little things are, what it means to be a pro. And, and, uh, you know, it, it's so, uh, um, you know, it just makes you feel so good to know that, that he's having production too. It's not that he's just out there playing, but he's, he's playing effectively. Right. And, uh, he was in on a couple more tackles. I think he, he's our leading tackle and I think he's got eight. And uh, so it's 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 a it's a very very uh, positive positive thing for us, especially when you get a punter who has been getting the ball as far down the field as what Ryan has to have a gunner right in their face all the time to make a tackle. You know, it, it becomes a huge factor for us in, in terms of helping win that field position battle. He's been a huge part of that. Sure, absolutely. I think it was Muma early in the game. There was a big hit on kick coverage, and uh, I, was it Muma? Muma put a hit yeah. on somebody. He didn't have it. Was, it, was, it was Muma. It was Muma and Akeem Davis Gay. They both hit the returner about the same time. It, okay. it, uh, it came right after the kickoff return for the touchdown. Obviously, yep. our guys were juiced yep. up and jacked yep. up after that. And then, you know, we come down and, and put a good hit on the returner right away. And it's 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 so great to see the emotion and the energy that those guys play with there. And I said, you know, it's. Uh, you know, we're like the uh, uh, special forces guys, right? We're like the tip of the spear, Royce, the first guys in, uh, you know, to battle. And uh, so we want to be the uh, uh, the group that uplifts the rest of the team. And uh, um, so we had two very, very effective plays. Just we had the two first two plays, first three plays, really, if you want to count the field, the PAT, but the first three plays of the game were back to back to back. And, and I think we won those pretty well. And uh, it certainly creates a lot of juice and energy for the rest of our team. And that's a, that's a heck of a good point right there. I mean, uh, that's uh, special teams. I mean, w- w- when they're performing at a at a special level like that, I mean that that does get contagious. I mean, you, you get you get young players pretty much that are that are working with you on on special teams. How who, maybe give us a couple of guys that from week one to here now at this stage of the season have gotten a pretty good idea of your expectations, what you want them to do how you want them to do it and all that all that good stuff who is who's arrowing up for you well i i think virtually all of them are for i mean let's face it we didn't start off great you know we, we had some plays early on in the season i don't think that a lot of guys are very proud of and, and i think they've all kind of grown together and, and it's certainly it's certainly certain it's certainly not something like we've arrived but right. we're, we're, we're taking advantage we're keeping on improving we're going to keep growing on a week-to-week basis um you know and just understanding how to play, how to react in certain situations. We did a couple of, uh, you know, higher level things in the game where we, we made some checks 
uh, and did some different things based upon what they did that uh, it's, it's very encouraging to me to see we can handle that type of stuff, you know, both mentally and physically. And we did that. We were able to execute it well. And, and so it was good to see. And we, we took advantage of things. So, you know, like I said, it, it's just nice to see these guys coming together. There's a lot of guys that I can name. I mean, um, Josh Newton's taking on a bigger role as of late here. You know, he's a starting gunner for us. He's, he's a, a three-phase, sometimes a four-phase starter for us. I think he's continuing to learn how to play as a young guy, as a rookie. Um, as you said, Tyson, it, it's been great to see. You, you keep we keep expanding his role and keep to see the dominance that he's played with. You, you got your steady Eddies and Akeem Davis Gaither and, and Joe Bocci. Joe's played at a, at a high level, a very, very um, uh, consistent level per, of performance. You know, Moom is still learning how to play. We all know that he can hit and uh, um, can tackle. Uh, he's just learning how to play the game, right? There's just so much that uh, – uh, that he has to learn in, in so many things, just how to play, what to expect in certain situations, how how teams are going to try to attack him, what they're going to do to him. I think he's getting better at it. I think it's improving on a week to week basis. Uh, it, it's still got you know certainly got a ways to go. You know, um, Tanner Hudson has played a lot of snaps for us the last two weeks. It's it's not you know special teams has not really been a part of his repertoire over his career. Right. But uh, I, I think he's he's you know and part of my job is to get him to understand and to learn that if you're not playing effectively here. A, you're not going to get a dress up on Sundays. Mm-hmm. And then B, you know, when we have attrition that happens and injuries happen in other positions, if you're not active on Sundays, I mean, I, yeah, I know exactly what position group they're going to go for the guys who aren't active, who, who can't contribute uh, in the kicking game. So I think he understands that. And, and so we've gotten some beneficial snaps out of him here the last couple of weeks. So, Coach, final question. Appreciate you covering all the time you have for us. Uh, I know it's a busy work day for you guys. Every day is once the regular season hits. But the beginning of the week is big. So, I mean, when you uh, when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles special teams, how good are they? How 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 tough a matchup is this one? I think they're I think they're you know again I've I've not uh, had the chance to dive into them deep yet. I've done right. some preliminary stuff. That's that's kind of what what's coming up as soon as I get off of this is really diving into them. But I know they're, they're uh, they've got a pretty good group. Um, obviously, we know they got a good kicker and, and Jake Elliott. I think their punter is doing a good job too. Braden Mann. Uh, I think they lost their returner a couple weeks ago, but yet they got a first-round pick and and uh, the kid from Iowa, Cooper DeGene, is returning punts for them. Um, and, 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 again, I haven't di- dove into all their personnel, but I, I think they're a very consistent, tough group that, uh, you know, I, I think they're uh, – uh, they've been hitting a lot of touchbacks on kickoffs, so they're limiting the amount of opportunities that, that we could get. We'll see what they decide to do on Sunday. Um, but, you know, again – we just played the team they played, and they beat them 28-3 to um, right. in, in the Giants. So they're doing something right. And uh, But it'll, it'll be a good matchup for us. We'll be excited to play in front of our home crowd again, and hopefully we can just put together a, a good game, all three phases playing together. You know, we, we've kind of had uh, a little disjointed, if you want to call it that way, I guess. You know, maybe one or maybe two groups play well, and the third group doesn't play quite as good or whatever it may be. We, we Hopefully we can start to get, to get, get it put together here. And, and I think this is going to be a big uh, – um, you know, litmus test for the rest of our season, how it's going to go is based on this game. Browns win the coin toss. They defer. Bengals are receiving the football. You think, ah, well, you know, that, that's all right. You were probably like, yeah, I got something. I got yeah. something. Browns win. I can't wait for this. It didn't take long for Darren Simmons to show that adjustment. Boom, 12 seconds later, 7 nothing, baby. You're the man, coach. Well, appreciate you having me on as always. Thanks. Have a great day. Thanks. You do the same. Put together a good one, sir. Will do. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.